Welcome to the Libra Solar Festival webinar with Bart Cook and Maria Caligari, who will share with us today their lifelong experience of discipleship path, working in the leading ballet companies of the world. And they, together, we will reflect on the topic of right balance. So, uh, Maria, Bart, welcome. Thank you, Sasha. <laughs> Thank you, Alexander. Thank you, Alexander. It's a pleasure to be here and a big honor. Thank you very much for um, being here today and preparing uh, your sharing. And I think you are in a unique position to bring your experience, sharing it with the community uh, on what is the right balance, very liberal topic for all of us and uh, um, very timely for the entire humanity, I think. So please, the floor is yours. Um, I will share with you the function of sharing your screen. So just a second. Okay. Okay, one second. Mm -hmm. yep. Very good. How is that for you? Yes. yes, we can see it. All right. Uh, thank you, Alexander. Uh, we're we're very grateful to be here with everyone today for this 2025 initiative, Libra Solar Festival. Libra, with its keynote of right balance and liberation from the pairs of opposites reads, I choose the way which leads between the two great lines of force. We will endeavor to keep in our thoughts today some of the goals of the 2025 initiative. Alignment to the light, give, as given to us by the ageless wisdom teachings, the role of beauty, joy, love and vitality as expressed through the arts, in particular through ballet, and the importance of goodwill through right human relations. The Tibetan describes for us the science of the interludes which keep the plan progressing. With Libra, we are now entering the lower interlude of the spiritual year, the autumnal equinox where we pause to integrate and harvest all the good work done in the higher interlude from Aries to Virgo. For us in the Northern Hemisphere, we now begin the cycle of shorter days and longer nights, balancing the night and day forces as we move towards the winter solstice. Libra begins a point of stillness, quiet reflection and poise, which we as members of the new group of world servers can make of spiritual significance and service. The second stanza of an esoteric mantra describes this skillful poise. I stand in restful poise, and from that poise, I can attract the gifts which I must give, an understanding heart, a quiet mind, myself. The polar opposite of Libra being Aries with its keynote, I come forth and from the plane of mind I rule. And here in Libra, this spiritual poise at the midway point requires the work of the higher mind and heart as it balances the pull of desires to achieve a state of spiritual compromise. A helpful quote from esoteric psychology esoteric astrology, excuse me, reads as follows. There is therefore the individual experience in Libra of the balanced life where an experiment is made and consequent tipping of the scales in one direction or another until either desire or spiritual aspiration weighs the balances down sufficiently so as to indicate the way that the man must go at the time. There is the experience of humanity in Libra, in which the same adjustments are being made, but this time the entire race of men is involved and not just an individual. 
this group experience carried out upon the mental plane will only happen when all men are polarized mentally. Libra, as the seventh astrological sign, is controlled by the third ray of active intelligence, representing law, sex, and money. It's an important triplicity, which DK tells us will eventually give the clue to the lower corresponding kingdoms, animal, vegetable, and mineral. Libra has its exoteric ruler, Venus, fifth ray of mind, Uranus, the esoteric ruler, seventh ray of ceremonial magic and ritual, and Saturn, the hierarchical ruler, third ray of intelligence. As a symbol of Libra, we often see the Lady of Justice with the scales representing the balance needed of the soul-infused personality and the co-creative relationship between the solar angel and the dweller on the threshold, matter and spirit, light and dark. As DK explains in esoteric astrology, Libra governs the legal profession and the balance between right and wrong, negative and positive. The blindfold represents impartiality that should be applied to the law and also represents the intuition and going within to heal cleavages. The sword in ancient times represented authority. To us, it is the sword of discrimination. The law in the future must be based on positive righteousness and not simply enforcement. It then bears in mind that Libra governs not only our consciousness, but our conscience as well to distinguish what is right balance, choice, and wise karmic activity. In rule seven from Treatise on White Magic, the Tibetan describes for us more about choice. The sensing of the dual forces and clear discrimination of the two paths leads to the development of the vital power. This vital power demonstrates its first activity in enabling the aspirant to achieve a point of balance and so stand on that pinnacle of achievement wherein a choice is made. Esoteric astrologer and disciple Dane Rudyard gives us the key word of ease in his book, Gifts of the Spirit. He describes the Libra gift of ease as an expression of totally accepted relatedness, be it with an object, a situation, or a person. It is the utter lack of mental reservation in approaching a relationship and acts which this relationship demands. As a dancer is related to the floor, a speaker to his audience, or as a participant in an international conference to humanity, whose many faces he beholds around him. Rudyar also goes on to combine the key word of ease with elegance as in the elegance and perfect ease of problem solving and finding solution with the least amount of effort. Ballet dancers are a good example of ease and elegance. Through the training and discipline of the physical form, matter and spirit meet at the midway point of expression. Both ease and elegance are necessary components to express beauty, joy, and vitality. A good example of this is the ballet Serenade by George Balanchine, which we have danced many times and have taught to many companies throughout the world. George Balanchine was our teacher and founder of the New York City Ballet. He was born in St. Petersburg and he fled Russia in 1925 to Paris where he collaborated with other important artists at that time, like Stravinsky, Nijinsky, Prokofiev, and Nicholas Rorick. He came to America in 1933 and settled in New York, where he said was the only place he could create a true American ballet company. Relationship and balance is paramount between the dancers, the music, and the audience. Right balance is an early learned activity within the body 
that creates poise and equilibrium. Here is another po quote from Treatise on White Magic. Balance and poise must be restored before equilibrium can be reached. The law of vibration and the study of atomic substance are closely intertwined. When more is known about the atoms and their action, reaction, and interaction, then people will control their bodies scientifically, synchronizing the laws of vibration and rhythm. We know from the Ageless Wisdom teachings, oh, excuse me, yes. We know from the Ageless Wisdom teachings that when the physical and the mental plane are brought into right balance, when poise and steady focus are attained, the pairs of opposites no longer hold sway. The point of equilibrium is achieved and we stand free and liberated. After years of experience with the ballet, we know that balance comes from a strong inner core muscle group and an awareness of all that is around you. This strength gives us the ability to use the opposite sides of the body as a whole, to move with freedom and grace. It also allows us to do movements that are off balance as well and to create motion that is fast or slow. A strong core allows movement with the least possible effort which produces beauty and grace. Aided by the incoming seventh ray of ceremonial order and ritual, as well as the Davic energies poured through sound and music, the art form of ballet can be a distributor for healing energies and balance so needed in our world today. The ballerina also has an unusual job of achieving balance dancing on the tip of the point shoe, which is only an inch around. The whole body must be sustained on this very tiny platform. When being partnered by a male dancer in classical ballet, we can achieve even greater freedom of balance with this support, showing us how much more we can achieve when working together. This photo of Bard and I dancing together is from a Jerome Robbins ballet called Glass Pieces to music by Philip Glass. Here we can see the principles of right relationship and as Bard supports me in a penche arabesque. The midway point, as you can see, is where our hands meet in the center, creating one long alignment between us. Wrong balance in the dancer comes from misalignment, like when the body is slouched or leaning too far forward or back. Right balance for the dancer, just like for the disciple, comes from proper alignment, from the feet all the way up to the spine, to the head. The vital energy must connect all the bodies to be able to move freely with the energies of the whole group of dancers or corps de ballet, as well as with the energies of the audience. <clears throat> so Bart, now would you please share your impressions and experience working towards balance in the ballet and discipleship living? <clears throat> yes. Um, when Alexander asked us as uh, dancers and now teachers to contribute to the Libra webinar with the subject of right balance, some word associations came immediately to mind. Balance. Uh, ballet. Uh, ballon is a, a French word, a dance term meaning to bounce like a ball or jump smoothly. And of course, Mr. Balanchine. The word balance can be used as a verb, as in to equilibrate or to free from tension, as a noun, as in a balancing scale, and as an adjective, as being in balance as in a neutral charge between a negative and a positive pole, a point of stasis. The necessary discipline of being a professional dancer lends itself well to the discipline of becoming a consciously developing disciple, as does being the vehicle uh, for the transmission, a dancer, and then becoming the teacher uh, of the soon-to-be transmitter, the student. 
as ballet dancers, we studio with an intensive focused class of energetic balance, each morning practicing versions of repeated exercises and the use of force in exact quantities for the specific combination of steps, usually meant in some way to portray an illusion or the extension of natural motion to, to make it seem ethereal or even superhuman, like extraordinary speed of weight transfer or floating, or the defiance of gravity. When you had learned how to execute these moves, it was almost better to do these exercises without thinking, so as to develop the habitual movement. Mr. Balanchine used to say, don't think, just do. <laughs> I, I must admit it took me a long time to understand what he meant. I think it was more like, don't let your lower mind get in the way of what you were trying to learn at this moment. Some of his other choice phrases were, where are you? And uh, whose legs are those? Meaning, be in the present moment, not going over your grocery list in your mind or the activities of last evening while doing these exercises at the bar. The purpose of this was to achieve right balance in the expression of matter, the body, and spirit balanced as a true source of inspiration and accurate portrayer of movement ideas. These first in the morning ballet bar exercises could be compared to morning meditation or alignment. If not correctly focused and done with the necessary amount of energy, neither too much nor too little, the goal is not accomplished. Here we see the value of repetition and actually, when we travel to teach the ballets of George Balanchine and others, we are called repetiteurs, the French word for one who repeats. Balanchine expected us to come into the class already balanced, so to speak, and also warmed up physically, to work right away in the center of the room. It took me a while after being invited to join the company to realize that he didn't care to offer us the usual bar work period of time to warm up as he wanted to get right to the refinement of movement in the center. We would need to come before the class began and do our own centering and warming up. I can remember as a young boy, I was faced with the decision of choice of what to do with my natural talents and was a bit inclined to performing and showing off I was uh, torn between playing the solo piano and dance lessons. Instinctually, I chose the dance lessons as they provided a group experience. Being in a group provided a more potent avenue of expression. And I realize now service. Dance is a perfect medium for experience, experience experiment, and express. When preparing for the stage, dancers will have numerous performances and are presented with many choices to make. In what way to focus? The need is to be present at the point of balance between spirit and matter, and this allows true inspiration and evocation to flow. From this midway point, beauty, joy, love, and vitality can be expressed to the observing audience, giving them opportunity to empathetic and experience the ritual invocation of the performance for themselves. A few months ago in the 2025 initiative webinar with Lorraine Flower, she suggested that leaders in all fields offer in whatever way they can true spiritual leadership. Lorraine ended her presentation with a wonderful quote from Rumi, helping us to see how leadership can be enacted differently. I didn't catch it word for word, though some of its fragments are, be a lifeboat, help someone's soul to heal, walk out of your house like a shepherd. These are some of the ways we try to provide spiritual leadership when teaching ballets, offering the lessons we learned in our own process of becoming dancers by trying to help young artists find their focus and balance 
which needs to be practiced along with your technical steps. Each ballet we teach requires a different focus, note, and style, depending upon the choreographer and composer. And each different company as well presents a different approach to the ballet art form according to the traditions of the country in which they are, are working. And um, it colors their learning style and their presentation style as well. A good example is the work that Marie and I did last year teaching at the Paris Opera Ballet. Actually, Mr. Balanchine had started a, a very new tradition in New York, which was to list dancers alphabetically without emphasis on specific individuals. He took away the star status, so ingrained in the Russian tradition. Though he wanted the individuals to excel, this also I mean, this, excuse me, this allowed more right focus on the ballets themselves and with less glamour and more group potency. So at the Paris Opera, there is a, a built up thought form based on star status and the principal dancers are actually called etoiles, which means stars. Our work was cut out for us as we strive to balance out their egos and personalities to allow a more soul fused expression in these ballets. And this they did very well and with great beauty as depicted in these photos. Another good example of balance is the partnering skills needed between a man and a woman in ballet, usually called a pas de deux, dance for two. Sometimes the man does too much and throws the woman off balance or he doesn't supplement her motion with a counterbalance which allows her greater freedom of movement. I sometimes demonstrate this principle if needed by the students by putting a chair onto one leg which I balance with one hand and then keep it on its balance as I rotate it with one hand, making the weight stay in the middle while it's turning. This is how we support the ballerina's multiple turns, for example. We use the principles of physics quite a bit. I even sometimes ask the men to close their eyes and use their hands like a moth's antenna to sense the balance of the woman, to intuit her feeling of center. Back to our Libra keynote of ease. I tell my dancers often to allow the movement to happen, that the dance and movement happens between the positions, those nearly impossible, physically impossible positions that we strive to make perfect. Not unlike the Eastern philosophy of the smiling Buddha, we in the West are often trying too hard. Expressing the yin-yang energies is the fine art of balance, which takes years of practice and even lifetimes. As they say, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. <laughs> Most professional dancers are well-trained in executing steps. As teachers, we need to liberate them to be more authentic and more empathetic to each other spontaneous as a group and with the audience. We know events in the daily life push the fulcrum from our center of balance to a new point of crisis opportunity, requiring a choice to balance the scales. When we look at a picture of the scales, we can see a triangle with the top apex acting as the fulcrum between the two trays of matter and spirit. The holder of the top apex is the blindfolded material woman, accessing her intuition and higher self. That top apex is the teacher aspect that moves as the lessons arise. As we allow the soul to be the teacher of our personalities, each choice moves towards increased alignment and resolved beauty. The teacher can act as this catalyst to challenge the student. In dance, it can be a new step to nudge the dancer one way or another. Mr. Balanchine used high contrast by giving steps very fast or very slow to pull us out of our comfort zone 
or a combination of five to a waltz tempo or a six eight tune. Balanchine's approach to neoclassic ballet was to challenge the status quo of classical ballet, providing a new and richer experience for the dancers and the audience and the world. One based on changing the balance points more rapidly than ever before. The balance points in ballet. Going within as the teacher with deeper listening to synthesize the dancers and their movements allows magic to happen on the stage where beauty is an ongoing resolution that never achieves but heads to a newer point of tension and decision. In this movement of the soul, Libra acts as the great teacher and the bringer of beauty. As we allow soul to be the teacher, as we more allow soul to be the teacher, our personalities will, with each choice, move towards increased alignment and resolved beauty. As we let the senses of perception merge into the one and let the language of the soul be understood, we can allow that our actions and our performance in the life radiate those sounds of the soul. Let the soul control the outer form. I, the triangle divine, work out that will within the square and serve my fellow men. While in the exterior world, the balance between men and women has not been equal, in the world of ballet, the feminine has ever been central. Balanchine often remarked, ballet is woman. And perhaps this art form has contributed to harmonizing this imbalance in the world. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Bart. That was so beautiful and well said, and also leads beautifully into our reflections on the new age of balance and right relationship in the world, in the United Nations in particular. Much is spoken of the need for equilibrium between man and woman in the coming era in the Agni Yoga books. Here is a quote from Letters of Helena Rorick. The approaching great epoch is closely associated with the ascendancy of woman. As in the best days of humanity, the future epoch will again offer woman her rightful place alongside her eternal fellow traveler and co-worker, man. You must remember that the grandeur of the cosmos is built by the dual origin. Is it possible, therefore, to belittle one element of it? There is coming a new age of balance within the United Nations with gender equality, sustainable development goal number five leading the way. There has never been a stronger message on behalf of the need for balance between women and men at the UN. As an example, we can look to the highest levels of office with the appointment of Deputy Secretary General Ms. Amina J. Mohammed. Before joining the UN, Ms. Mohammed served as a special advisor on the Millennium Development Goals. On International Women's Day, March 8, 2017, the UN Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, echoed the need for gender equality. Women's rights are human rights. Historic imbalances in power relations between men and women exacerbated by growing inequalities within and between societies and countries are leading to greater discrimination against women and girls. Denying the rights of women and girls is not only wrong in itself, it has serious social and economic impact that holds us all back. Gender equality has a transformational effect that is essential to fully functioning communities, societies, and economies. When considering gender equality within the UN, we might also look towards a gender bias that has been attributed to the nations themselves throughout history. France has been considered feminine, Germany masculine, and yet we know from the Tibetans' writings that nations are in fact gender neutral, 
possessing a soul ray that guides and protects. If we can reflect on this idea of the soul destiny of nations, we too are contributing to creating right balance. When UN Goodwill Ambassador Emma Watson gave her iconic speech for the He For She campaign, she stated that if we live in a world where men occupy the major positions of power, we then need the men to believe in the necessity for change. On May 1st, 2017, the former president of the General Assembly, Mr. Peter Thompson became an international gender champion and reaffirmed his commitment to equality within his own office and in senior management levels. We can reflect on Emma Thompson's words to stop violence of all forms against women. Both men and women should feel free to be sensitive. Both men and women should feel free to be strong. It is time that we all perceive gender on a broader spectrum, not as two opposing sets of ideals. If we stop defining each other by who we are and start defining each other by what we are, then we can all be free. This beautiful painting by Nicholas Rorick is called Agni Yoga. The new age of balance is here, aided by the Aquarian age, the energies of Libra, and the ideas of sisterhood, brotherhood, and freedom in all forms are lighting the way for humanity towards peace and in preparation for the coming one. We thank you. Thank you very much for this deep sharing. And uh, this topic of balance has so many levels of analogies, and it brings so many And this is so much understanding in various fields of our lives, and uh, you touched on some of them. But uh, I think the, ref the our collective reflection can bring it further. And so I mm -hmm. suggest we open now the floor uh, for comments from the audience or, or questions and sharings. So please. Uh, those uh, who have anything to share, you can use the function of raising your hand and um, we will unmute you that we could hear your voice or you can uh, use the chat uh, section of the control panel uh, to write your uh, question or thoughts. I want to, uh, before um, other people um, um, come with their questions, I want to use this uh, moment to ask you about what you said on uh, repetition and the continuous uh, development of discipline and that leads to the actual skill development and I think for all people who strive towards the fulfilling life of discipleship the question of um, discipline is very is very important and uh, so I think you have uh, special experience in that. I recently encountered a phrase which really uh, impressed me uh, that a master uh, failed many more times than a beginner tried. And so how was, what is your experience dealing with failure and maintaining the discipline of continuous repetition that actually leads to that mastership of expression? Oh, that's a, a great question. Beautiful question and beautifully put. Um, 
the exercising of the physical body allows us to work um, down with our muscles and, and our energy. And it's the same thing. You have to have the concentration to um, allow this to happen. Um, if you try too hard, you get it wrong. The need for perfection is very strong in performing artists, and yet we have to know that by doing, we learn. Uh, the, the process is the path. Uh, you know, some of it is never going to be perfect. It's just each time it's going to be a little easier and a little better. We had the luxury of knowing that we would have repeat chances of performances. Um, you know, we would get to do it again and next time it would be better. And we were helped by knowing this. Uh, it, it's the same on, on the spiritual level. If we can be in touch with our souls who will always, always be helping that personality who is maybe too hard on himself. I failed, you know, oh, I can't do this. We can. We're meant to inevitably become. And uh, that is the path. Maria, do you know? I would just I would just add to that, um, Alexander, that it's such a good point because in, in learning a craft like ballet or any of the the arts like that, um, failure is just so much a part of it. Um, and you just you learn to keep the goal in mind. You learn to keep the goal in mind. And uh, a, a great teacher is really really useful in, in learning that skill. Um, and it, it does get better after, after the lessons of re repetition are continued and continued. So, um, you know, it's so much like discipleship. Also, also there's the element of humor that we, we get in the uh, labors of Hercules <laughs> while he's learning the lesson of Libra. He's grabbing the physical body which is the, you know, the swine by the hind legs and walking it down the mountain. You know, the soul, the soul, and everyone laughs. So you have to approach your learning with a bit of sense of humor, a tongue in cheek. I will, I will get myself up, brush myself off and start all over again. When, when dancers fall down in my rehearsals, I, I can sometimes break into applause to break the pressure because they will be feeling like they've hurt their body or they're embarrassed. But no, I say, you know, just try it in a different way. It's good to fall. That's enthusiasm. Now let's just go a little gentler and you won't fall or, or adapt here, adapt there. Or, or as many teachers say, and it, it, DK says something like this about discipleship too, but in dance we say, you know, if you if you don't fall, Balanchine used to say, if if you, if I didn't see you fall, I I wouldn't know you're trying. So that's like the crisis, you know, <laughs> like you have to have the crisis to have uh, to go to the next step. I've had to put many young dancer together. Um, of course, there are those who won't try. That's a whole a whole another ingredient. You have to build a fire under them. But, um, you know, having the physical tool to use the repetition is a very good analogy to uh, continuing the discipleship plan path. Mm -hmm. I think it's the, at the beginning of the treatise of white magic, TK says that uh, one of the most important qualities that disciples should cultivate is the perseverance and right. endurance on the path. Right, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and through that perseverance, we're building endurance. Mm -hmm. And uh, another... also confidence, also confidence that the way is doable. Yeah. yeah. Um, there is um, um, Tracy says thank you for the beautiful analogy between belly life and walking the path and balance 
Um, I want to invite again our audience to um, share your thoughts and maybe questions and uh, to join our conversation. Hmm. I have another question, um, uh, and it's yet another aspect which you uh, s touch upon on your presentation. It's about the uh, balance of when. Uh, mm, two dancers come together in a group balance and they find that uh, point of equilibrium of mm. togetherness. And uh, you have uh, been partners not only on a stage in a dance or in your teaching, but your life partners. Uh, you've been living uh, together for a long time. <laughs> so you definitely had to find that point of balance in your family life. Maybe you can just share some of insights of, on, on that experience. I, I used to call it an exquisite life dance. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the dancing we did on stage was very interesting because we were partners on stage before we became interested in each other personally and um, romantically. And um, uh, this is very personal. I hope it's okay to, to put out there. But the way of using our energies on the stage, we, we were of the types that we supplemented each other beautifully. And in life, the same um, balance comes about. You know, sometimes they say opposites attract, and astrologically, they're the opposite sign is the one that is needed for the one that is opposite you see well it it makes for the life test uh, two peas in a pod sometimes have it a little bit too easy <laughs> so um what do you I, think I, my, no. my dear <laughs> no. i i just um thought i would just share that uh, when we were when we were partnering together and like in some of those photos we use today, um, uh, we, in this pot of dough we did for Jerome Robbins, um, it was very interesting because Bart and I would not usually be partnered with a, Bart was a little bit smaller for a partner for, I was very tall. Once, when the woman goes on When point. I got him to point shoes, I would be very tall and I would need a taller partner. And so then we were paired together in this, which made us more more equal. Um, and what what I found when I was dancing with Bart was that the the partnering was so so amazing, if I can say that, that I, I really learned how to let go and to just just be just be myself, which was a really great gift. Um, and you know it. It is, I guess, the same. You're searching. You're searching for the best communication and the best relate relatedness you can achieve, which then you distribute to the audience. Which then the audience becomes the the apex of the triangle, you know, because you are creating this bottom point and then you're sending it out. And I guess then, when you're living together and you're you're trying to be disciples and learn and work um you know you're hoping for the that as well <laughs> one of my uh early partnering uh lessons I, I was in the new york city ballet for only one year maybe not even and i had natural partnering abilities i guess it you know uh empathy compassion or whatever but uh i was assigned to dance with one of the lead ballerinas senior ballerinas a very, very difficult partnering role, uh, a pas de deux in the Ballet Brahms Schwimmberg Quartet. And I didn't have long to learn the dance and I was put into the room and uh, I was so responsible. I was trying to help her so much. I got in her space, this, this beautiful ballerina that I idolized. And she finally, after several tries at some of the steps, turned to me and said, Bart, maybe if you just wouldn't try so hard, maybe maybe if you didn't touch me, it would go better. <laughs> no, she didn't really mean that, but I was trying to be 
too helpful. So what do we call it? Psychic space. You have to allow your partner to have the space to be who they are and still act with right relations, right relationships, right? Balance. <laughs> Maria and I keep that in life. <laughs> Uh, there, yeah, and they're true with so many analogies, and uh, yeah, this allowing this space for your partner, it's uh, and communicating. Those mm -hmm. are beautiful mm -hmm. lessons for many of us to learn. At least for <laughs> myself, I can say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, there is a raised hand, so I will unmute Marta. Martha. Hello, uh, Maria and Bart. First of all, thank you for this brilliant presentation. Um, I watched Serenade before um, preparation for this program. So I'm primed in some ways. Um, the two questions that came to mind was uh, your marvelous linkage between the individual and one sense and the plan. So the question is, how did you two come to realize that your individual commitment would contribute to the plan? And then I have a second question, and you can forget them, or uh, I'm just ask. I'm pondering. Mm. In connecting your presentation to sustainable development goal five mm. you really are highlighting that the empowerment of women simply won't happen apart from the company of men mm. so i wondered if you could elaborate on this notion of complementarity as related to our spirit our, our concrete work of implementing Sustainable Development Goal 5. Thank you so much for your presentation. Oh, Thank you, Martha. Thank you, Martha. Um, I can speak a little bit to the first question, um, Martha, and the when did it come to consciousness that mm. my individual contribution was contributing to the plan? You see, there is a performance hi hierarchy in the world of ballet, and um, even though it was played down by Mr. Balanchine, there's, it's like in a concerto, there's sometimes a solo instrument, uh, some concertos have two solo instruments. Um, and in one wonderful Balanchine ballet, it's the two ballerinas portraying the two solo violins uh, in front of the eight girls, which portray the string backup, a concerto barocco by Bach, double violin concerto. Um, so that's one example, and the person in front can either be a, a black hole and suck all of the energy up, or they can be a, a nova and contribute to what's going on behind them and feed what's going on behind them. As we worked through the ranks in the ballet company, you actually realized that you were part of a machine. You were the cog in one idea and without everyone contributing all together to the same idea, thought form, you would be distracting from the whole and the potent point that wants to be shown. So that was a gradual learning thing, but it's also the same in group work. Also the same in group work. You have to intuit what the other people are doing and supplement and become a part of it. Thank you. Uh, um, I would just add to, to that, Martha, that we were, um, it was quite unique being part of this uh, contributing body of people to George Balanchine's vision and outpouring, being in New York City. Um, you definitely felt a sense of purpose and you know it's unconscious it's unconscious at first where you know you're doing something important you're not quite sure what it is but it feels very important to be presenting this art 
for the audience in in New York um, and all over the world as we traveled. Uh, and um, it was very interesting then when we found the theosophical work and then finally the Tibetans work uh, where you start putting it all together of, of uh, the nature of how this may be contributing, how maybe we are contributing to the plan. And um, as far as the SDG, the number five and the complementary work, um, it's so it's so critical, it's so acute because in in the ballet world, for example, um, we we can't do without the other. You know, the 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 woman in these beautiful beautiful arias of Padidas can, cannot sustain the height of the evocation, evocational energy, could I say, without the man's support. It just cannot happen. Um, and it's wonderful, it's wonderful when we support each other. Um, and I just, it was very moving to, to um, think about SDG number five and all that's being done, the he for she campaign, and just, uh, it's very inspiring. Bravo, Maria. Yes, thank you, Martha. Thank you, Martha. Yes, and everyone. <laughs> so, um, we are now um, in the time of approach uh, to the hierarchy and the period of the Libra full moon. And so today, as we will meditate and together, we can bring the focus to this topic of right balance. And uh, as we radiate throughout the world, these ideas and inspirations, so it's something that we can keep as an image that that beautiful picture that you showed earlier of that balanced couple on the stage and that point of equilibrium as a ideal for humanity that we are all striving to. Yes. So, um, I think we now can move to uh, to our meditation and if you have any anything you would like to share before we go to meditation uh, please um, this is the time and if not then just please lead us in meditation ah yes uh, today we'll be working with letting in the light Group fusion. We affirm the fact of group fusion and integration within the heart center of the new group of world servers, mediating between hierarchy and humanity. I am one with my group brothers and all that I have is theirs. May the love which is in my soul pour forth to them. May the strength which is in me lift and aid them. May the thoughts which my soul creates reach and encourage them. Alignment. We project a line of lighted energy towards the spiritual hierarchy of the planet, the planetary heart, the great ashram of Sanat Kumara and towards the Christ at the heart of hierarchy.
extend the line of light towards Shambhala, the center where the will of God is known. Higher interlude. Hold the contemplative mind open to the extraplanetary energies streaming into Shambhala and radiated through hierarchy. Using the creative imagination, endeavor to see the three planetary centers, Shambhala, hierarchy, and humanity gradually coming into alignment and interplay. Meditation, reflect on the seed thought. I choose the way which leads between the two great lines of force.
precipitation, using the creative imagination, visualize the energies of light, love, and the will to good pouring throughout the planet and becoming anchored on earth in prepared physical plane centers through which the plan can manifest. Use the sixfold progression of divine love as the sequence of energy precipitation. Shambhala, hierarchy, the Christ, the new group of world servers, men and women of goodwill everywhere in the world, physical centers of distribution. lower interlude. Refocus the consciousness as a group within the periphery of the great ashram. Sound together the affirmation of love. In the center of all love I stand. From that center I, the soul, will outward move. From that center I, the one who serves, will work. May the love of the divine self be shed abroad in my heart, through my group, and throughout the world. Visualize the downpouring spiritual inflow released from Shambhala through the hierarchy and streaming into humanity through the prepared channel. Consider how these inpouring energies are establishing the pathway of light for the coming world teacher, the Christ.
Distribution. As the great invocation is sounded, visualize the outpouring of light and love and power from the spiritual hierarchy through the five planetary inlets, London, Darjeeling, New York, Geneva, Tokyo, irradiating the consciousness of the whole human race. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth.
Thank you, Maria, for leading us in meditation. Thank you both for this wonderful sharing today. And thanks everyone for joining this circle today. And we will continue our balanced alignment that we achieve today throughout the next few days of the full moon approach and we'll strive to keep it as we continue our journey on the path. Thank you. Please uh, join our coming new moon webinar on October 21st, we will uh, start the new cycle of meditative work on strengthening the thought forms of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And we invite uh, volunteers to step forward to focalize one of the New Moon webinars, bringing the group focus to one of the 17 sustainable development goals and our next uh, full moon webinar will be Scorpio webinar with Claire Bainon from New Zealand sharing on the topic of the discipleship's triumph from the battle I emerged triumphant the role of joy and beauty. So thank you very much. Happy full moon and let's end our work today with Gayatri. O thou who gives the sustenance to the universe, from whom all things proceed, to whom all things return, unveil to us the face of the true spiritual sun, hidden by a disk of golden light, that we may know the truth and do our whole duty as we journey to thy sacred feet. Oh.